Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're going to be discussing building business credit in the 21st century, what that looks like. So I have Sebastian with me today, been partners for years now working together. And I just want to go right into the meat and potatoes of building business credit on your side in terms of being the service provider, where we can kind of go through what the expectations are, what the industry looks like, so that the customer, the person watching that is looking to build their business credit can have a really good idea of what they're getting into and how to avoid some of the marketing traps or yeah. misconceptions or misrepresentations of how it works in regards to building business credit and the, the different paths that you can take. So I think that'll be really, really good. We'll take it to the whiteboard, map out some some numbers and some key points and go from there. So I want to pass it to you in terms of the where you would start or how you would explain what building business credit looks like in the 21st century. And if there's any like changes or if this is a type of world that is either constantly changing or if it's the type of industry or world where it's pretty consistent with small variables. So I'll pass it yeah. to you. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Um, so definitely, you know, there's, because business credit has become much more popular, I'd say in the last 10 years, um, as a result, um, biz, you know, companies, service providers, uh, in particular, fintech companies have, uh, kind of caught wind of that and are creating products to complement the demand, which is, you know, folks that are looking to build their business credit. So there's definitely continuously now new companies, new products that are becoming available that are unique and interesting um, and very useful for, for building business credit that maybe was not available five years ago. And um, another thing is sometimes these companies, uh, they, they bring out a product and it works for a time and for some, whatever reason, they take it off the market. And so maybe something that I was recommending a year or two ago that worked is no longer available. And so it is important to kind of stay up with what's current what's actively currently working, what's new, um, what's just fluff. Um, and, um, and ultimately, yeah, being on top of that is very important. Um, one thing I could say, for example, um, just two, two, two prime examples, um, NAV, which is a business credit monitoring service and website years ago, all they did was business credit monitoring. You, you could pay NAV, $50 a month, um, and they allow you to monitor your Dun & Bradstreet, your Experian and Equifax business credit. Now they've evolved into being a business uh, credit coach service and um, a business finance uh, broker, right? So as much as I need to use them because it's the most cost-effective and efficient way to help my clients monitor their business credit, I kind of hate sending people there because essentially they're a competitor in that regard. Right. Right. Yeah. But, they try to, they, I get the emails. Hey, you qualify for this. Hey, you qualify exactly. for that. Yeah. Exactly. And, and that could be a distraction. Day, that could be a distraction for your clients. It could be. A, that's what I was going to say, because they're not dealing with you on a one-on-one -on -one kind of going through your case. They're just kind of, they're marketing. Right. And just like yeah. any bank or lender, as soon as your credit score goes up a notch, you know, and you meet the marketing criteria, it doesn't mean you're actually approved for a loan or for a credit card or for whatever you're trying to do. You just meet the marketing criteria for them to send you a pre-qualification letter. It doesn't mean you're qualified. Right. Right. And here's a little marketing trap. Maybe correct me if I'm wrong here, but chances are what NAV is promoting is based on whoever's paying them to That's also to, put that to, product yeah. front and center. Yeah. So, they, so they, they do both. They do advertising and affiliate marketing. Right. Mm -hmm. So advertising is they're getting paid up front to promote a product. Affiliate marketing is they're going to get paid on the back end. And there's nothing wrong with either. Affiliate sure. marketing is a little less, um, I would say, um, uh, biased. Right. Where advertising is, well, you're going to advertise this company or product regardless of if it's a good product because you're going to get paid up front. Right. Correct. So. Yeah. I have an affiliate relationship with NAV. They pay an affiliate commission. I recommend NAV. Now they're the only uh, the product on the market that offers that, right? So that's the only option I have to mark uh, to um, monitor credit, right? Yeah. But recently, what NAV has done is they've created some some new products. They've created a business checking account. So there's the NAV business checking account. They have a a, a, a charge card. It's called the NAV Prime card, right? Which 
Um, it's basically connects to your business's debit transactions and you can run your transactions to the prime card through NAS prime card and they report those transactions to the business credit bureaus. Mm. That's pretty savvy, right? Yeah. I don't know if you remember, but about a year or two ago, I talked about a personal debit intermediary, which was called extra that helped people build their personal credit doing the exact same thing where you connect the extra card to your personal debit. And then instead of using your personal debit card, you use the extra card. But when you use the extra card, it pulls the money from your personal checking, right? But it reports those transactions to the personal credit bureau. So you're just building credit by using your checking account on autopilot, via yeah. the extra account. Well, this nav prime product, it's mm -hmm. pretty much doing that now. So yeah. now this product, this nav product, uh, this nav product um, is actually a two in one. It reports your monthly reoccurring payment for the monitoring and it it reports the prime account if you get the prime account gotcha so there's some great things about nav and i use nav i've had it had it for years now um but there's also the nuances to be aware of when you're trying to acquire debt that just because the first thing that pops up or the first thing that's presented may not be the best product for you and this is gonna hit home for my audience that's watching that's doing velocity banking on their personal or business finances is where I usually tell them we don't just apply at the first bank that has a HELOC or, or PLOC that's making an offer or the first thing that we see on Google or we don't just apply at the bank that we're already doing business at. If there's other options out there, we can get better rates, better terms, better deals, right? Right. So continuing on, we've got let's dive a little deeper on building business credit in in today's world on your side as a service provider so so far you mentioned that there's there's individuals or small businesses like yourself that's coaching that's providing the education that's walking people through on a on a one to one basis or maybe a group basis and that such so i'm going to take it to the whiteboard here and just kind of draw some distinctions here so we've got the service provider, which is you, right? So, or we could say a small business that is providing business credit services, whether oh, that's like credit consulting or coach and coaching. Yeah. Okay. So business credit consulting, coaching, so education, and this, this world mm -hmm. can be free, right? So there's, you know, two components. There's, you know, the free and paid that people get to choose from. So people hit your YouTube channel. You provide mm -hmm. free content. They can get on your email marketing newsletter, right? Maybe you got a free course. Maybe do a free consultation. You do all these different things free that helps them get prepared to actually build their business credit, right? Yeah. And then w with within that, there's also paid programs on coaching, consulting that is teaching you, walking you through it. But at this point, we're not actually getting any business credit yet. This is just the education side of it. So when right. someone's like, okay, I want to learn how to build business credit, pretty much everyone was going to start here, right? Correct. Either in the free or paid realm, right? Then there's these sort of either we call them third party services. I would say, or requirements, no matter who you talk to, whether it's Sebastian or someone else, yeah. no matter what, the, the moment you go from education to now taking an action step, you're going to have to interact with these third party services, Correct. right? And so would you say that NAV is a requirement in the it, process it would, of building business credit it would be it's, it's one of the first accounts i recommend yeah. um once we start building you know before we start building we you know we we go through the credibility process of making sure all the data points are correct but once we finish that which typically takes a week or two then um, we start building and it's one of the first building accounts and that's because it's a monitoring account so we kind of we need yeah. it to be able to track your progress and see what's happening as you grow. Um, but it's also a reporting account. So it, 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 it's, it solves for two, two, um, a two uses. and one. Right, right. Yeah, so that so, is one. And yeah, then there's these, you know, many, many, many. Others. Gotcha. So these third party services, another example, like so Dun and Bradstreet would be another requirement, right? And they right. also do monitoring, right? So Dun and Bradstreet, um, with the way I teach it, 
would be we, we just set up a free Dun & Bradstreet account, free profile. We can pay extra money to Dun & Bradstreet to expedite the process, but it only expedites the process for accounts that report to Dun & Bradstreet, and it doesn't speed up the process on Experian or Equifax. So it becomes a little bit of a null point to expedite it because we're not just building Dun & Bradstreet. We're focusing on Dun & Bradstreet, Experian Business Credit Division, and Equifax Business Credit Division. Got it. So Dun & Bradstreet is really a major business credit bureau. They do have paid services that you can uh, pay them for, but it really only benefits Dun & Bradstreet. And so for that reason, I would, I would advise not to waste money on that, on those yeah. paid services. Um, because through the coaching you're going to get, you're going to be building Dun & Bradstreet, Experian, and Equifax. Yeah. So on the personal credit building side, we know that there's those three bureaus mm -hmm. that every lender looks at, right? So it's Experian, mm -hmm. right? Equifax, and then TransUnion. Now, in the business world, it's similar. There's certain bureaus mm -hmm. that all these banks, institutions, lenders look at. Right. And it's a matter of getting the education to figure out which third party services are in your best interest to get approved for certain type of debt that you're looking for. So Correct. unlike on the personal side, it's just these three things. Correct. So if I'm looking for a loan, if I'm looking for a line of credit, if I'm looking for a credit card, it's kind of the same right for for everything here mm -hmm. but on the business side it is different it yeah. does change like for example if i am looking for a business line of credit and i'm a a business owner that's in the trucking industry then i'm going to want to get reporting from a certain type of bureau correct that can serve me and and get approved because maybe these institutions don't like lending to businesses that are in the trucking you know or if i'm in right. real estate or something so there is like this nuance it's a customization it where it's a right. little bit more standard on the personal side right so we right. all right so now with with that within these third-party services some of them also provide free and paid education and where the marketing traps can occur for people or like a distraction Mm -hmm. is these these systems are more than likely using like ai and they're gathering your data and then they're spitting out potential qualifications or pre-approvals just like on the personal side when you sign up with like credit karma let's say right right and they just kind of throw you all these different credit cards or whatever but they they may not be in your best interest right so over here say like a nav has a database because we have to use them because they're providing the monitoring and the reporting. So that those are some key things that you said in right. the, um, the building blocks of building business credit. There's monitoring services and reporting. And in order to build business credit, we need to report our movements, our transactions to Correct. Experian and Equifax. Right? And Dun & Bradstreet. And Dun & Bradstreet. Now, there are others as well. Yeah, you could put on... Um the SBFE, which is the Small Business Financial Exchange. Um, you can also put PayNet, PayNet. Um, you could put uh, CreditSafe. These are like the major Texas. one. Yeah, these are just other places where data reports. So SBFE reports. is the Small Business Financial Exchange. Mm -hmm. And some companies that report to SBFE, SBFE then reports to Dun & Bradstreet, Experian and Equifax. But SBFE also reports to the SBA with Small Business Administration. And they and then they create a score called the SBSS score, which is an SBA business credit score. Mm, gotcha. And platforms like Experian, Equifax, CreditSafe, PayNet, SBFE are not actually providing the debt. They're providing no. the score. To get approved yeah, for the they're debt. They're just providing historical data just like Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion on the personal yeah, side. Yeah, and same with Dun and & Brad. And same with Dun & Brad. Uh, but with NAV, NAV mm -hmm. is the monitoring and the reporting service to these different platforms, let's say. And they can get you qualified for debt. They're not providing the debt, but they get you they can get you qualified for it, providing you the marketing. Right. They rec make recommendations of what yeah. could be available to you. And we don't have to use NAV because you can monitor through Dun & Bradstreet directly, right. through Experian, 
directly through Equifax okay. directly, but you have to pay for that. And before, yeah. by the time you pay for that, you're going to pay three or four times as much as what you'd be paying Nav. through Nav. Mm -hmm. And then Nav is also reporting their account as a business credit account to those bureaus. So it's really just much, much more efficient and advantageous to use Nav. But technically, yeah. you could bypass Nav and go directly to those bureaus if you wanted to verify, uh, you know, what's reflecting, what's reporting and monitor your credit. Yeah. And I would say at, at this point, you're you're a vital piece to that that little tip right there, along with multiple, many other uh, customizations, recommendations that you're making for people to build their business credit. So for those that are listening and think, okay, let me go DIY this. And then they get into this world, into the 30 third party services with their marketing strategy. And like you said, maybe they're providing some kind of a coaching, but it's not as as intimate or one to one, where that's where they can end up making not a mistake, I would say, but it was just a higher cost to achieve the same result, maybe you would charge and whatever you're charging, you're now saving people over here on this end, but then also getting them faster to approval process, getting them faster to getting the exact tool that they need. Because then that's the other part here that the third party services don't actually educate on is what type of debt does your business actually need? Does it need credit cards? Does it really need a loan? Or does it need grants, right? Or uh, an SBA loan at a super low interest rate rather than a business loan from American Express, you know, or PayPal or something like that, where you're going right. to pay a ridiculously high rate or a business line of credit that comes with a transaction fee every time you pull money out and a ridiculous interest rate, even though that might be easier to qualify for. Right? So right. you'd be able to, you're able to, you know, give that distinction. Okay. So you're definitely a vital piece here now in that world, because you're in it as a, as a service provider, business coach, consultant, educator around building business credit, getting qualified and other aspects here. What are some things that you would want people to be aware of when they're working with someone like yourself like if you had to put yourself on the hot seat right and then compare it to other providers in your space in terms of right. what what your business model is right and if that differs from others in the space that may be you know doing a ton of marketing on how they can get you you know half a million dollars in 60 days 90 days or quarter million dollars in funding or some of these content creators that really boast about how much debt they were able to get their clients in a short period of time right. if you want to touch on that and i'll you know continue on on the whiteboard here all right perfect yeah so if we could maybe on the right board write um three three things um yeah one is going to be um uh building business credit okay so building biz credit two would be accessing business credit and then uh three would be um, business credit with net terms. Okay. So the, the, I'd say the thing that you, you know, if you're talking to a consultant or a coach and you're thinking about hiring them, you want to kind of look at what are they promoting, right? Um, are they promoting a specific type of funding? And is that all they're talking about? And is the roadmap or coaching that they're going to provide you exclusively tailored to that particular unique niche? So for example, credit card, um, there's you're going to find a lot of um, coaches right now that they themselves either went through a program or they figured out how to get access to lots of credit cards. And so now they're teaching other people how to do that. And so what they're talking about is accessing business credit card, but they use a whether they're doing it on purpose or they're they're unintentionally doing it. There's a play on words because what they say is, you know, build business credit in 30 days, get access to a hundred thousand dollars. Right. So then that may, leads you to think that, okay, I'm building my business credit and accessing a hundred thousand dollars in 30 days. But if all they're really doing is guiding you through a process to get access to business credit cards, unfortunately, most of the business credit cards don't even report to any of the business credit bureaus. Correct. So what so you're, you're doing not actually you're, building business you're building, credit, you're accessing accessing business 
credit cards, which has value if that's your need and your your desire and, and, and your goal. But if you're if you're under the assumption that you're building business credit, you can have 10 different business credit cards and have no business credit reporting on your profile. Yeah. Right. So let's give an example of that before you move forward. So let's say I have an American Express business credit card. Would you say that that would be an example of a of a potential credit card that's not reporting to the different Correct. bureaus Correct. versus right. a net 30 account that is with Quill, you know, or something like that is reporting Report, right. the way you so need now the to. argument that that person is going to give you is that, well, you don't need business credit on Dun & Bradstreet or Experian or Equifax. You don't need that because I, I just showed you how to get business credit cards without it. Mm. And the, the, the truth is they are right. If your only purpose and goal is to get business credit card, if that's it, if the, right. if the buck stops with the credit cards, then really all you need to focus on is having excellent personal credit. Because right? you still need personal credit in order to access those business credit cards. Those business credit cards. Correct. Um, and what's crazy is they put out things like, oh, if you have 680 credit, I can get you $100,000 in X amount of time. But unfortunately... 680 credits really not going to cut it. You're look, you know, to get those credit cards with the 0% promotions and to get big limits, you're looking at, you know, 750 to 800 or higher credit with mm -hmm. good season depth history on the personal credit profile. So, when I'm talking to clients, I'm also talking about personal and business credit. They're equally important. They're married. They're not separated, right? Gotcha. Um and then the thing is when you're looking at equipment financing, cars if you want to finance the vehicle that you drive in the business credit with no personal guarantee right then yes you definitely need to have that business credit built on dun and bradstreet right on on Experian, right if you're if you're financing equipment if you're in an industry where you're buying trucks and you're buying you know big uh expensive equipment printers or any any heavy duty type of equipment typically those business finance uh equipment finance companies they look at pay net which is a division of Equifax. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a Paynet score, they may give you a loan or a line of credit for that equipment, but they're not going to give you 300,000. They might start you at 70,000, right? It. With a higher interest rate to test it out, build a little credit on Paynet, and then a year or two later, you know, increase that lending capacity to 300,000. So if you're in the trucking industry and you're looking to build out fleet, you want to buy trucks, or you're in any industry that requires equipment, you know, Paynet, Equifax is going to be important. So getting a bunch of business credit cards is useful and it could it could add up to a lot of funding that you can leverage for your business. But it's not the end all to financing and it's not the answer and solution to all of your financing needs. Right. So would right? you say with the current marketing going on, TikTok, Instagram, the works, the shorts, all that stuff, would you say most of the marketing in your world is targeted towards accessing business credit rather than building business credit. And do you think the reason for that is because it's faster, quicker, easy to convert? Right. It's okay. it's it's sexier. It's it's exciting. I'm going to get access to zero percent credit cards, and I'm going to get fifty to a hundred thousand in thirty to sixty days. Um, it's not going to show up on my personal credit, and that's true. It doesn't show up on your personal credit in most cases, but it still requires a personal guarantee to get approved. Um, and again, if that's the need, if the need is you know access to financing between fifty to one hundred fifty thousand, and you have excellent credit, then we can focus on that. We can go right to that and um, get access to multiple zero percent interest business credit cards. And there's a strategic way of doing that as well to get the maximum approvals and the maximum credit cards. That's kind of what most of the companies that I see that they're marketing towards is just that product. And what I don't like what I see is that they're saying that you don't need the, the rest of it. Like the rest of it's a waste of your time and money. And the truth is, like I said, it might not be something you use today, but in the future, if you are gonna finance vehicles or equipment, right? Or, or Denzel, I, I had a client who, um, his his business was a marketing com is a marketing company and they they won a marketing contract competition you know they were in a competition with about 100 other companies they it came down to two companies they won the contract because they had the strongest business credit mm -hmm. yeah so when they were building their business credit 2 years earlier with me that's that wasn't even on their radar they weren't thinking about 
okay, this is why we're doing this so that we can win this mock marketing contract. Right. Right. Um, I've recently learned that if you are in a business tree where you're, you're looking for, you have to get a bond for your industry, a bond, you're, a bond. Explain that. Yeah. Explain that. Um, so in certain industries, um, you have to have certain levels of um, insurance protection and it, and uh, there's, they're called bonds, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and, and um, to increase your bond in a, if you're a general contractor or you're a trucking company or you're in even like the credit repair industry, right? Um, your bond capacity can be limited to the strength of your business credit. You build up business credit, you can increase your bond capacity, which, which means would you allow you to get more clients or handle more, contract. uh, yeah. more contracts. Gotcha. Exactly. So that also converts to the government contracting world, I would assume, right? The better personal and business credit you have, the more contracts or the more attractive you would look when you're bidding Correct. versus another company that may not having no business credit is bad credit or Correct. would be looked at as like, was, was this guy not, not right. qualified at all? Right. And just gets passed over okay so on the so some of the marketing traps in the world of service providers like yourself there's a lot of gurus on on the internet that as you said they achieve something that is pretty awesome and they learned it from someone and then they you know regurgitated that information and now went on all the different you know podcasts all the other gurus that have huge followings and they're educating a, a massive audience about how they can build business credit and that's the words that they're using interchangeably not realizing there's a difference between building business credit and accessing business credit and what we're getting at here on the right hand side of the board here is there's gurus influencers that are using words that create confusion on building business credit versus accessing business credit and that may not be a bad thing to access business credit, right. but it's when you use the word incorrectly right. and then draw to a conclusion. And then to your point where you add it on to say that it bothers you when you, when you hear them say that you don't need to actually build a business credit score with all these different bureaus to access credit. And right. you're saying that what they said is actually a true statement, but it can have unintended consequences later on in your business. If you think years later, oh, you know, I was able to access 150,000, 250,000 of debt. Let me now go and apply for this equipment financing loan to get a fleet of trucks to, you know, get into the trucking industry or, or to, uh, I need, I need um, vehicles and I'm going to go do Turo. You know, or I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to get a moving company and I want to get, you know, I need huge printers, you know, really expensive printers, like whatever it is, mm -hmm. then you get immediately denied and you're like sitting there like, wait, what the heck did I just pay all this money for? And it solved for this thing, but may not, it just gave you the wrong, uh, interpretation. It's, a half, it's really just kind of like a half truth, a half truth. Right. Um, yeah. And the, you know, my thing is, um, preparation, um, is is what leads to success right is being prepared preparation plus opportunity equals success um and so if an opportunity presents itself and you're not prepared it's too late at that moment right um so i've you know let let's let's go to an sba loan because there's the sbss score depending on the bank you're talking to some banks limited to loans under 300 for the express loan where they require that sbss score it's from it's from zero to 300 and a 160 is the minimum, right? Now, if you have an 800 personal credit score, right? Then the way the SBS, SBSS score is calculated, you'll probably have like a 170 SBSS score. So even if you have no business credit, your SBA SBSS score will still probably pass their test. If you're seven, 750, you actually have good credit you just don't have excellent credit. You may be lacking and maybe around 140, 150 on the SBSS score, right? God. Had you built up some basic minimal business credit, you wouldn't have anything to worry about. You'd have passed that test. You've qualified for that SBA loan, right? So it's not just equipment and, and, and these assets. The reason assets are more useful is because they can, they can get, take, take the asset back. So they are much more inclined to give you an asset like equipment, vehicles, et cetera, with no personal guarantee because essentially the asset is collateral. Right. It has right? value. Those things that were, right. you know, 
Gotcha. But but unsecured, they're they're still they're always going to want that PG. Having the business credit combined with the PG is going to sometimes be the difference of you getting approved. But even if you have an 800 credit score, having the business credit is still going to be a value because what it's going to do is going to help you to get better rates, and better terms, right, mm -hmm. and potentially more money because at the end of the day, they're looking at both your business and your personal. So if right. you're just, if you have just great personal, you may qualify, right? But you wouldn't even know the difference that you could have experienced had you had both really strong personal and really strong business. So that's why it bothers me because um, a lot of people are buying into those programs and until you need it, that's when you know, you hit that wall and then you're like, wait a minute, I should have done this, right? And mm -hmm. I should have built that business credit, you know? And so, you know, you want to, if you're looking at a person that you're going to talk to, that you want to hire as a coach, you want to kind of listen to what they're saying in terms of, if you hear people saying things like, let me show you what I did on how I got $150,000 in credit cards, right? And I can do the same thing for you. Be wary. Because that means that that person is teaching you a strategy that's based on their own personal experience, which may be limited to just one di dimension of of the industry. Of the also, space. the also the times. You know, there's times where banks are just not going to be lending as much as we may think, and then there's other times where lending is really expanded. So it's a, a fluctuating market that can that can change. So staying up to date with those things are important. So yeah. now, and yeah. then you're also talking about really just thinking long term, what's your strategy, what's your goal before getting involved with a coach, at least having some kind of an idea of why do you need $150,000 of debt? Or do you really only need 30? Right? Or why do are we trying to get a half a million dollars worth of a debt? Or is the goal to get as much debt as humanly possible, or exactly what we need, or percentage above what we need for buffer, right? So being able to have that where like, let's not get sold on how much someone was able to get their community or a group of people in a period of time that that really shouldn't even be a selling point. It, more of like, what are we solving for? And how quickly did we get there? I think is more of a better, um, I would I would say a better approach, in, in my opinion, if I'm, you know, trying to access it. So that's really, really good stuff that you mentioned there. Um, the third the third piece was biz credit with net terms. Is that feeding into building business credit of the three things that we mentioned? Okay, yeah. okay. So it's not a separate thing. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. And so the, the reason I wanted to add that on there is because they again they'll people will say that there's no value in those accounts and that it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't make sense to me how someone can say that because if you can get access to five, ten, twenty thousand dollars with no interest and you have a net payback of 30, 60, or 90 days. And when you use that account, you get rewards points back. How is this not a value to you? There's no interest. You're getting rewards points and you now can float cash flow for that 30, 60, or 90 days. And if you're in the velocity banking world on the business side, so I would like to take a little bit of a segue here real quick. So for those watching that are asking, how can I do velocity banking on my business? There's not really a whole lot of content on there in, in regards to doing velocity banking on the business. I've done a couple of case studies, but even those are vague in terms of how I actually get there. Most of the case studies that I've done with business owners, they already had business credit cards or business line of credit in place. So there wasn't the question on how do I get this? At that point, if I'm talking to someone offline, I send them to you, right? Now, in the world of accessing business credit for the purpose of velocity banking, it's only solving for credit cards because that's really all it is. Accessing business credit is really just credit cards. In order to get a business line of credit, I would say you need to have some business credit built up. Am I right on that so far? Because it's a bit of a, a harder tool to acquire. It's a bit more rare, business line of credit. This is where I think people get confused is they think a credit card is a business line of credit, which technically it is because the bank is saying get a business line of credit or American Express business line of credit. And then I have to explain to the to the client that this is actually not efficient for the velocity banking concept because of all the transaction fees, uh, cash advance fees, if you're trying to turn credit into cash. Right. A, a true business line of credit allows you to turn credit into cash with no fees and right. there's that revolving function right. and then the way the interest is calculated 
simple interest daily compounded where the interest compounds on the due date rather than it getting charged right that point in time for example if you have a credit card for those that are listening if you have a credit card and you do it you did a cash advance so you turn credit into cash you're immediately getting charged interest the moment you pull the money out and for however long it takes you to pay it back and you're likely going to be at a higher interest rate but with a true business line of credit if i got 50 grand and i take out 20 i'm getting charged interest immediately yes but it's not getting added to the balance of the 20k which that makes a world of difference in the uh, world of velocity banking where you're going to be dumping your income in and right. taking expenses out to, to pay bills so if i want to do velocity banking on the business side would you say it's important to have a business uh, a building business credit strategy plus being able to access business credit through credit cards yeah. or is it one or the other all right so it's both no, definitely no. both Exactly okay. both. And equally, again, on the personal credit side and to be able to get a business line of credit, a true open revolving simple interest line of credit, like we talked about, you're going to need to establish a relationship with the bank or lender. You're going to need to show their deposits in that account. And you want to do that for at least two to three months before you apply for that line of credit. Yeah. So it's not just, oh, let me go apply for this quick and easy loan. It's a strategy, establishing, building the relationship and then applying for that line of credit. That's really where you're going to get the best lines of credit is when you establish a relationship with a bank. Um, the online, the fintech lenders, business lines of credit products are something you'll do on the journey to get uh, eventually to get to that true open-ended simple interest line of credit with, yeah. with the bank that you choose in your state. It could be a credit union. You know, there's many different banks and it has, we have to look at where you are in the country. Because it's right. not the same in every state, right? Exactly. So, yeah. So it's it's um it's you know it's tailor made based on where you are, your industry, your use of funds, the amount that you need, um, how fast can you pay it back? Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of variables that go into the strategy of what am I trying to get access to? How am I going to leverage that? Right. And then a ten year term versus a ninety day term. And Right. And so those those net 30, 60, 90 day accounts, this is new information to me. That's where you can access an, an account that doesn't have interest and allows you to pay it back within 30, 60 to 90 days without interest. Right. If you go if you go longer than then, yes, there's I'm assuming. Right. An interest charge they, you'll have a you'll have a, a penalty a penalty right interest, you just have a penalty yeah a penalty got it so this comes an idea and i know those of you that are doing velocity banking watching your advanced and you've been practicing it this is going to land where if i have a business credit card that i'm running bills and getting cashback rewards and i pay the statement balance each and every month to avoid interest that's pretty straightforward, simple. Then your second component, which is your main debt tool, your true business line of credit, where you're depositing all your revenue, all your income into that line, and you're pulling out a lump sum of money to make a chunk toward your either personal debt, because that's a strategy. People move their personal debt over into the business. Now they're able to write off some of that business interest debt, and their personal credit shoots up, because it's no longer reporting that they're in debt over there. They're now in debt on the on the business side. So let's say they were doing that strategy. And instead of just running bills on that business credit card, if they also built business credit along the way and accessed net 30 accounts, started building those up, what you're getting at is saying, hey, maybe we can identify certain bills in your business that we can throw on this net 60 or net 90 day account and let that expense just sit there for almost 90 days. Meanwhile, more of our income sits in the business line of credit for an even longer period of time. And you said that the net 30, 60, 90 day accounts also come with some cashback rewards or, or points, something to that nature. And I know that there's those net 30 60 90 day accounts where maybe you might even get some some benefits or some discounts using that particular account for particular 
types of expenses like equipment expenses or office office expenses right. things like that we get like mm-hmm. some better deals you're able to shop on certain platforms we get yep. like maybe a better rate for using that specific card mm-hmm. so that is huge because we're talking you know velocity banking is all about keeping as much money in the credit line for as long as possible to manipulate whatever that interest rate is And if we're doing Velocity Bank on the business side, you even have that benefit of being able to write off the interest. So that is a huge benefit there. And and those of you that are listening that didn't build business credit, and maybe you worked with a guru out there that just gave you a bunch of credit cards, and now you hire me, and I see all these different credit cards that are on 0% for 12 months, 9 months, 15 months, 21 months, 18 months, and you owe 10, 20, 30, 40, 50K on all these different cards – you're paying the monthly minimums and you moved all your personal to business. But all we did was move high interest and consolidated. And if we're not, if we don't have a strategy to eliminate that debt on the credit, it's eventually going to expire. And I'm willing to bet, I don't know if they can get another round of credit cards to forego the debt to extend the lifeline even longer. Maybe another credit card or two, but I don't know if they're able to extend all of the debt. Probably not all of it. The rule of thumb there would be at least 12 months later, number one. And then all of the credit utilization would have to be um, on the personal side under 30% per credit card. Not overall, but individually under 30%. Yeah. So that can be an issue getting approved later on thinking that. You know, you were about to make this move. Maybe the move didn't work out in the business or you thought, let me just move all my personal to, to business and I'll pay it down later. And now later has come. And now you have credit cards at 27, 29 high interest rates that you pay two, three percent to move over in the first place. And you had to pay the guru thousands of dollars to access a hundred thousand dollars because that's how they're charging you, right? Like they, they charge you a percentage of how much credit line they get you. Yeah. So, so some, this- some charge an upfront fee plus a percentage. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, and again, you know, they're providing a service. True. So I'm not knocking the, the business model. And they did it. They did it correctly. Right. This is, service, right? yeah, this yeah. is me more so um, now talking to the customer to be aware of what you're getting involved in when you're hearing a strategy on how you can move personal debt over to business and yeah. boost your personal credit score. And then now you get access to more personal credit. So then when those business credit cards expire, now you throw them over to the business, uh, to your personal. And I don't know if that's really the best strategy, but I've heard that before. And being able to run the math on, okay, if, if this coach has a $2,000 upfront fee to work with them and they're going to get me access to $150,000 of debt, and they're going to charge 10% of the total credit that they get you. So now that's another fee. You don't maybe pay that fee right up front out of your own cash. You pay it from the credit. So now it's sitting on these credit cards, mm-hmm. and you're going to pay a 2 to 4 upwards of 5% transaction fee to turn credit into cash. So we got three fees so far, and you haven't even technically used the debt for your own strategy. So now you factor in, okay, I'm going to move $50,000 of personal debt into the business side. And now I owe maybe when it's all said and done, I owe $65,000 of which 15K just came from fees to do that. And if you run the math, maybe you would have been better off just staying with the personal debt at those high higher interest rates and avoid the $15,000 fee altogether, right? So there might that's just something I want to keep in mind for those that are like maybe entering this process to really think about the cost to do all of that. Build your business credit, access your business credit. Does that actually make sense? Or do we need to switch the strategy up to solve for something different and maybe go the the more, I would say, not the harder route, but the more diligent route of actually building your business credit to reduce the cost and fees of hiring a high-end guru that has high uh, high costs to run their marketing ads and have their employees and staff to handle all these leads coming in. All right, so there's something to be said there. Okay, good stuff so far. Anything you want to add or something that we might have missed so far? Just being in the on on your side as a service provider, we went over expectations, different things. 
to be aware of free paid anything we might have missed in in that um i think that's just really important regardless of what type of debt you're trying to get access to for your business whether it's going to be credit cards or a loan or a line of credit or any type of debt um i think what most business owners are not doing unless they're required by the bank to do it is taking the time to actually prepare and have a really good business plan because without a business plan you're kind of flying by the seat of your pants and the business plan is is going to allow you to basically predict where your shortcomings are going to be and you can correct that before you get there and with that business plan you should have two to three years of projections and so now you know exactly if you do need money for the business you can be very intentional and specific of as to how much money you need and how you're going to use it. I talk to so many business owners that want money, but then when it comes down to like the use of funds, they can't granulate and tell me in detail what they're going to do with the money. Yeah. Right. Um, and then I asked them, okay, well, you know, what are your projections? If you get this money, they don't know because they don't know what their numbers are even now for their business. So, you know, building a, a prop, a nice business plan, having that done, um, it's going to give you the roadmap, but it's also going to help you to learn your numbers and really be able to predict where you're going. And then just like any map, you know, there might be a, a construction on your route, but if you have a good map, you can redirect, you can reroute, right? But if you don't have a map, you don't know where you're going. You're just, you're gonna, you know, stumble around and you might get where you're going, but it's how much faster will you get there if you have a good map with instructions and direction. So your, your business plan is your map. And whether you're, you know, bootstrapping it to start your business, don't underestimate the value of that. And I can provide a couple of links that you can provide in the description. Yeah. Um, you know, we can provide the nav link. Uh, I, I can provide another, a net 30 link. Um, and then I can also provide a, um, a very inexpensive business plan writing software. It's like $15 a month mm -hmm. and every business owner should, should do that, should, you know, have that business plan. And, um, before you go looking for money, you really need to know your numbers and have that plan in place. Love it love the whole point of knowing your numbers i think that's key before you come to the table hiring someone to help you access more capital in your business to have a very very good read on your numbers so with that being said i want to now go into your process as a business coach consultant today in in 2023 i i'd like to just i just erased the board and I want to map out A to Z from the, you know, what's the first things you're saying to a new lead, how you're qualifying them and just taking them through your process. So let's use, I'll use an example, but I know that the, your process is going to be pretty much standard for, for everyone. Yeah. So the example I want to use here will involve everything, not just accessing business credit, but building it as well. Okay. Let's say we're dealing with, and I've, and I've had multiple clients do this, which is why I'm going to use this particular example, is the trucking right. industry, right? Okay. Let's say someone has a, a good read on their, on their personal finances, doing pretty good, got some debt, good cash flow, they're full-time, and they want to start a trucking company, right? And they need capital to get the truck and then put someone in it. Or let's make it easier. Let's say they already drive trucks. So they already have their licensing, but now they want to go independent. They want to get their own 18-wheeler. Uh, and I don't know if you know the, the pricing of these things, but I going back in, I think it was like 2020 or 2021, I had a client. It was the finance of the truck was like in the 80K range. So I'm assuming these things can be six figures plus to uh, acquire an 18 wheeler. So a lot of capital, let's say someone doesn't have that to acquire that vehicle and they're starting a, a business brand new. Let's go into the process. Okay. A to Z. <clears throat> so step one, we, we would start with a, a free consultation. Um, and on that consultation, I'm going to interview you. I want to, I need to know and understand where you are on your journey, what your objectives are, what your what your goals are, what um, and and ultimately get a really good understanding of who you are and your business, and that way from there we you know take the next step. So the next step would be to uh, complete an assessment and evaluate 
um, your your profile to qualify for funding. So I do have a uh, a one time. Uh, it's an assessment fee of two fifty two hundred fifty dollars. Um, which at the end of funding, depending on the type of funding we I deliver, um, I get either paid commission or I have to charge a fee if I don't. But basically, that's that will be um, rebated to you on the tail on the tail end the two fifty. Um, if you don't qualify for funding, then that covers the time for me to then coach you on your personal credit and other variables that you need to prepare to qualify for funding. So that's the initial assessment. Um, from there, uh, we're gonna be looking at about 12 different funding solutions. So if you're coming in and your goal is to get access to funding today or ASAP, right away, whether you're a startup or you're an existing business, we're gonna go through the same process, right? Now, once I complete the assessment, which on that assessment, I'm gonna be evaluating your personal credit, right? Um, and with that, there's gonna be a, a dollar trial, which I give you a link to either Identity IQ or My Score IQ. So that gives you a three bureau FICO eight credit report, no inquiry on your credit. And I use that to underwrite and assess your credit. It's personal. a dollar trial and you can cancel that if you don't wanna keep it. Per per personal credit, right? Personal credit. Got it. That's within this 250 assessment. Correct, so you pay the dollar separately because you go mm -hmm. set that up and then you provide right, 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 right. on my application. Yeah, so my, my question is that the 250 covers the assessment evaluation and the 12 different funding solutions that you're gonna be looking at. Correct. That is all done in one call or is it two or? Well, the first call is a free call and then once um, you submit the credit with, then I, I need about 48 hours or so to underwrite yeah. it and we schedule a second call and then that call will probably be 30 minutes to an hour. So that one that one dollar trial happens after the free consult. After the free concert consult, upon yeah. you saying yes to my assessment. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, so two fifty one total so far, and within these twelve different funding solutions, and in the example here, let's say they're patient mm -hmm. enough where they're like they're working their full time, they're saving money, they're you know paying off debt, and they have a desire to go independent, acquire their first eighteen wheeler to you know get a deal start making more money driving trucks for themselves rather than for their employer so if we're a little patient we're not looking for money right here right now but we do want to find the best solution for this example here to acquire a truck i'm assuming there's multiple ways to to do that in your opinion let's say they got pretty good decent 720 an above credit score on the personal side, but there's nothing on the business, right? Because it's brand new. So we're looking at those 12 different funding solutions. Now continue where you left off, where we're going from here. Sure. So so then at that point, um, we would then, so depending on the variables of the interview. So one of the questions is how much cash on hand do you have, right? Because that goes into play for financing if it is a truck, um, truck finance companies are typically going to want 10 to 20%. If you're a pure startup, probably 20%. Okay. So let's say uh, I got 15,000 saved. Right. Perfect. So, so that, you know, that puts us in a range of getting you approved for a truck, you know, in the range of 75 to 150. Um, most of these start, um, truck finance companies for a startup are going to cap that loan at 75,000. Got it. Right. So if you're looking for a, a truck and it's 90,000, um, you have, you're still going to need to put the 10% towards the 75,000, but mm -hmm. then you're going to have to pay the difference. If it's over 75,000, you're going to have to come out of pocket on that. Okay. Right? And that's if that's if it's an equipment financing truck financing company right now, if you don't have that, um, so cash we're going to go, we're going to go with 95 K is the, is the cost of the truck. All right. So we'll start with right. that. And I got 15 K saved. Perfect. Okay. Continue. So, yeah. So, uh, so then that means that uh, if ten percent of that will be nine thousand five, um, well, ten percent of seventy five, and then you pay the difference on the ninety five. Yeah. So that'd be twenty. You pay the difference on the twenty. So seventy five hundred deposit plus yeah. twenty thousand is what Got you'd it. have to pay for a startup first truck. If we're financing it through an equipment financing company, the benefit of doing that is that they are going to report that to Paynet. Okay. So, so my fifteen, my up. fifteen thousand is going towards the seventy-five, or is it seven thousand five hundred? I'm putting down as ten percent. Uh, your your ten percent is going towards the seventy-five, mm -hmm. is and so that's going to be seven thousand five hundred right. towards the seventy-five, and then you have to pay the difference right. above seventy-five thousand. So I would have seventy-five hundred dollars 
left and I'm short, so 20,000 minus 7,500, I'm short 12,5 so far. So I still need to come up with 12,5 to, no, the, to, to no, get no. So the So the, the loan amount would be 75,000. So your yeah. 10% is 7,500, mm -hmm. right? And then you're going to pay the difference between the 75,000 and the 95,000. Which is 20. Which is 20. So you're going to have to have a total of 27,500. Ah, okay. 27,500. Where did my other $7,500 go? Into the actual loan amount of 75,000. But I thought I only had to put 10% down. You did. So on 75,000, which is 7,500. Yeah. So then the so then the the difference between the 75,000 and the 95 is 20. Okay. So I'm going to write there's a there's a 20k gap. Right. Right. So I just want to make sure I'm getting this cuz I know some people will get confused on it as I'm getting confused a little bit. So the total price of the truck is ninety five thousand. Right. The, but they're only financing seventy five. Right. I'm, t I'm. I'm. One of my funding solutions is a financing company that will only give me seventy five thousand dollars for a for a, as a startup. As a, a startup. A yeah. And it could be a new or used truck. So whether let's let's say let's go with new. Right. They're only going to give me seventy five grand. 10% of that is $7,500. That 7,500 came from my savings of 15K. So now at this point, I got $7,500 remaining. Uh, okay, sorry. Yeah I, yeah, I don't see the 15K on the board, so I forgot yeah, about yeah. that. Sorry. Okay, my bad. Let me go full screen. Yeah, yeah. So 15K saved, 7,500 went to the 10% down. Right. And now the, the financed um, amount of the loan will be 67.5 at whatever interest rate, whatever monthly payment that is. There's still that $20,000 gap. My 7,500 can make up for some of that gap, right? So then at that point, I'm short 12.5. Okay, cool. Yeah. So now- But we were on the same page. I just didn't, I couldn't see that 15K. So yeah, 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 okay, cool. So now this is perfect that we did that because I'm pretty sure someone got lost in that. So 12.5, where does that money come from? So we're going to have to find that. So that could be that could be a 0% interest or maybe two 0% interest credit cards. It could also be uh -huh. a personal okay. term loan, one or the other. All right. So that, as a startup. So looking at options, we've got personal loan term, right? 0% mm -hmm. credit card cards. Mm -hmm. And what was the other option? Um, then it could also be... It just depending on what you have, it could be a self-directed 401k rollover. It could be high cash. Oh, oh, okay. Like if I got more money on the personal that I can dip into to, to, to fund this. Yeah. Well, yeah. other, yeah. In, in the, in the startup environment, um, we're looking at leveraging anything um, and everything, pretty much everything and everything. There's yeah. not many business finance solutions. Banks do not want to lend for startups. Right. Okay, yeah. cool. So in addition to this startup in this example here, there also needs to be a budget for actually establishing the, the company, right? right? And you you help people on that as well. Cause, Correct. Because there's, there's building business credit, mm -hmm. and then there's building business credibility. That's a, another right. totally different thing as well that feeds that's, into building business credit. That, that's the pre-game work, as you that's like to call it. That's the pre-game work. Okay. So before we even get here, let's say I have no LLC yet. Mm -hmm. I can't do none of this yet, right? So let's just say in this example, I already have an LLC, Sebastian. It's all you know set up. I got my business phone number, and maybe they're missing a couple of things that you would evaluate right. within this, right? Then that first free consult, you're you're asking, hey, do you have an LLC yet, or like, do you have correct things? How old? What's How the industry? Old? Yeah. Got it. Cool. Is so, there revenue yet? Are you pre-revenue? I got it. Got it. Awesome. So if at this are, point, if, go ahead, sorry. So at this point, we're we're let's say to come up with the other 12.5 we used two zero percent credit cards mm -hmm. and did a you know convenience check boom so now that 12.5 is sitting in two credit cards zero percent for 12 months minimum 12 months typically yeah yeah minimum 12 months and maybe the monthly payment on that is like 200 something like that now the financed amount of this truck 65,500 are there some unique repayment options within this world or is it kind of set like here's your first payment on on this day mm -hmm. or is it is there some kind of a gap to get the revenue going so that we can start paying monthly payment 
you know, after the, once the loan closes, you can anticipate within the next 30 days, you're going to have your first payment due. Right. So this person has to start making money, get on the road immediately within 30 days, have enough to make their first payment. Gotcha. So would you say like in the coaching space right now, when you turn on the coaching hat, you would tell that maybe you would tell this client, Hey, um, we project the loan payment. Maybe the repayment on this is like $1,300 or something. Mm -hmm. Right. And we got a $200 on that, on that gap. We used all the savings. There's a lot of risk here. If we don't start generating income and within first 30 days, right. I'm already going to be late on, on Correct. these things. So yeah. would you advise the client, Hey, maybe we need to borrow more money from personal assets or let's take another three, six months to build up some more, some more cash. Is that something that you're yep. bringing up? Yep. So based on, you know, the urgency of the client, um, because sometimes the client comes and, you know, especially in like the trucking industry and they already have contracts lined up, right? They mm. just need that truck and they can hit the ground. Go. Got it. You know, and, but then you have other cases where they're, they don't. And so now, you've tapped into your um, your savings, right? You've depleted that and you're gonna have a, <clears throat> a a turnaround time where that return, where you start maybe three to six months before you start generating revenue. What are you gonna do, right? So that's where, you know, getting additional capital to help you survive that time would be valuable to you. But also, again, having a business plan would help you to see and predict that better um, and therefore um, just be more um, strategic in, in right. your in your in your financing. Um, but so there that might be now where we really get into a, a higher amount of personal debt, which could be term loans or credit cards. So instead of just getting one or two credit cards to finance just the gap on that loan, maybe we get five or seven credit cards. Okay. Right? And instead of getting 12,000, now we get you a hundred thousand at 0% interest for 12 months. You don't have to use all of that. Correct. Your monthly payment is only based on what you're using, but you have it in the, in, you know, in reserves, if you need it, you can tap into that debt. Right. Okay. Uh, now, it, you know, caveat to that or nuance to that is that with the 0% interest, sometimes they come with um, requirements to use it immediately or you lose it. Mm -hmm. Within 30, so 90 days. You typically, yeah. Yeah. So there, so there are ways, and we show, I show you how to do this to leverage the credit, not with cash advance, right? Where you can liquidate between fifty to seventy percent of the credit at zero percent interest. You might pay that three yeah. percent transaction fee, but mm -hmm. you can get liquidity at zero percent, and now store that money. Use the same money to make your minimum monthly payments on mm. the credit card, on the loan, but really store it so that if in that interim, while you're starting to get the business going, you, you need extra funds for gas or for food or for, yep. you know, whatever the cost mm -hmm. of living and doing business as a startup is it's, 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 it's a scary time. It's a scary yeah, time. For sure. Um, and, um, so just having that extra buffer is definitely going to give you peace of mind and allow you to be more productive, you know, perform better and do better. So, so I'm going to um, add that day, if you don't use it, pay it all back in one lump sum and right, you know, and now you have all these credit cards that you have available that you can tap into whenever you, if, and whenever you need them. Yeah. So I'm just going to do an example here of like, say another credit card or two or three or four, where we say 50% was 20,000 and that 20,000 of debt is literally servicing the payments of the other two debts and the card itself and that might buy us six months before i run out of the out of the 20 so the 20 would sit in the business checking account and at at twenty thousand one percent yes that's right you know two hundred dollar payment so we got 200 plus 200 plus 1300 and then call it i don't know how much gas is for these for these kinds of trucks i'm assuming it's multiple hundred or say again they can guzzle. They can guzzle gas. They can definitely guzzle gas. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll aim high here. Call it a thousand for maybe gas and food. So, twenty seven hundred dollars. Let's say that's the the cost 
of just the truck, main, the, the, the gas of it, and for the driver, for the meals, things like that. You also have, if you're, if you're in this particular industry, not just the meals, but, um, you know, uh, hotels, because you're not going to sleep in the Hotels truck. and stuff, right, right. Unless, unless the truck has the thing. Right, the built-in cabin. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. But even then, that, that has to factor in a cost for the um keep the i don't know if the whole thing is running no they they have it it's kind of like a it runs at a, like a minimum consumption right uh, and i think they even have them now with like hybrids where you can plug them in and then it just runs off of that but but still yes there's a cost to you know keeping the cabin cool while you're sleeping inside the cabin so i'll just say divided by six yeah. So about thirty three hundred dollars a, a month, they, you know, between twenty seven thirty three hundred dollars a month gives you about six months worth of capital to cover everything. And when you look at it overall, it's like okay, we have the we have the sixty seven five of of debt. We have the twelve five of debt, and we have the twenty thousand. So we went into debt a hundred grand, and then we would need to run the math on what is the projections. Of, of revenue for this company to say, okay, can we justify going into a hundred grand of debt if that meant generating 150,000, maybe 200,000 driving trucks independently for yourself? And so mm-hmm. they, they would, so they would leave their full-time position. Maybe they were making 60 grand a year as for their, you know, employer driving trucks. And now they can potentially double their income. So am I going to get out of debt in the first year? No, but if I doubled my income, went into debt a hundred grand, double my income now go from 60 to 120 maybe higher and then just kept doing that in year two and then amped it up i would i would say there there is to me i i probably wouldn't do it i would probably want to have a little more saved saved a little more you know because i was i had a client i still do client of mine that he acquired a vehicle a truck and then flipped it so it you know he ruined total the whole vehicle he actually flipped the truck, flipped not the like, truck. Flipped it, like made money on it. Like Mm-mm. the truck and, crashed. Uh, yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Crashed. So that came with, you know, setbacks. Uh, now I'm not driving the truck, so I'm not making money anymore. Yep. So that, you know, looking at worst case scenario, what could, what could throw off this whole thing? Right. I think that's another important thing for those of you that are watching, that are running your own numbers and mapping this through is like run a worst case scenario. If this doesn't work out, if, if um, I blow a couple tires. If there's a an engine problem, if um, I get in a crash, if I flip the truck, if I total it, what does that do to my personal finances? Because the debt still needs to get paid, yep. right, each and every month. So if I burn through savings, burn through debt on debt to pay debt, it can get a little ugly, uh, mm-hmm. very, very, very quickly. So okay, so your process looks like a three step process here. Was there anything after the the different funding solutions? Assuming yeah. The person already has their LLC in line, everything in place. Is there anything that we missed? Yeah. So assuming we get the funding, you get the truck. Now we got to start building business credit. So you're a driver. We can get several fuel cards that will give you net 30, 60, 90 day terms on gas. Right. We can, um, you know, really start doing that side of things is building. Now you might need to wait a little bit before because again you have the cost of the the coaching the course Mm -hmm. and then you have the cost of doing business which is the transactions that you have to pay for on when you're building business credit right Mm -hmm. um the full build my full build uh business credit building course is two thousand um and so that's just the cost of my coaching access to my course which basically is step-by-step instructions um there's probably over 50 maybe 60 accounts in a strategic order with, you know, as, as you go through the process of uh, setting up accounts and not everyone's the same. If you're not in the business, in the trucking industry, I might have you set up one fuel card, but I'm not going to have you set up three or four of them. You don't need that. Yeah. Um, now a little bit down the line, Denzel, a year later, you have the business credit business is going all right, but because you built the business credit, you need a laptop, you know, you can get with the business credit accounts with Dell, with, with um, Apple, you know, with limits on there from fifty to one hundred thousand dollars, where you can finance, you know, that equipment with no personal guarantee. So that's a huge value, you know. Again, building the business credit. Yeah. So the building the business credit is going to be the next thing as you're managing 
the debt that you have, paying it off. One one thing I kind of want to bring up is that a lot of folks, when they look at a strategy like this, they 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 kind of get scared because one of the questions they'll ask is, "What is this going to do to my personal credit?" Right? Yeah. And the answer is, it's going to have a tremendous impact on it. You you just got five new credit cards, right? You might have got one term loan, and now you have a business that it doesn't that business that doesn't show up on the personal but your scores right. are going to take it you have high credit utilization but it's important to note that that's not derogatory it's ah, leverage yeah it's just leverage right it's just leverage you pay that back next month the scores go back up you use it again it goes back down right yeah so that can go up and down the key is to be strategic and know or plan in advance for your next major move right like don't you know if i'm gonna start up a trucking company i'm also not gonna you know try and buy a home anytime no. soon like no, you're gonna have to make it at a time. Yeah, one have everything time. all at the same time. You got to decide. Okay, what's more important? You know what? And then that and that's a personal decision, right? Yeah. You know, it might be more important for you to uh, uh, you know start the business, and then two weeks later you find out your your uh, wife or girlfriend's pregnant, and now it's more important for you to get the house. <laughs> you know which one? You know, it's, yeah. situations change. And, and how long are you working with the client? if they go with the 2k option all in how long is that that's service a year. that's a, a year. year okay one year now i do have a, a higher level which is which because with that 2k option it's access to my course right um and then it's limited time together we're probably going to spend two hours in the first month right and then mm -hmm. probably an hour per quarter after that and that's more just kind of checking up on progress making sure things are going well and then giving you next le next level or next steps instructions, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, but there's a limit to that, right? So I do have an unlimited option, which is ten thousand, gotcha. and like with that, I call you any time of the day, hit yeah. you up. Hey, that's that's the that's the person that really needs the hand holding, that really needs the accountability on a weekly, monthly basis. Also, for a year, or does it go a little longer? A year, a year, but it's unlimited. So with that, I just give you an hour scheduler a 30 minute scheduler or 15 minute scheduler and you book calls it. So you still just can't call me blindly because I'm right, right, busy. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yes, you, you basically book appointments as needed as many times as you need to. Um, and of course that's, you know, we're talking, covering personal credit, we're covering business credit, business financing, short-term, long-term goals. If they're working with you, um, then of course I want to, you know, kind of have maybe a powwow with you together where you know we're we're working on their strategy as far as velocity banking personal and with the business um if they have not implemented um uh, a whole life policy yet for infinite banking want to get them on track to to do that as well because ultimately that's the for me with all my clients i tell them all every single person i talk to that i sense has an open mind i want to tell them about that and help them to make that a goal in their personal and in their business life um because if they can ev eventually get access to a high cash value line of credit and leverage that to finance the business then we can wean them off of the need of using the bank and the credit cards and and they can leverage their 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 life insurance cash value that's cool you know whether that's short term or long term right mm -hmm. um and sometimes that might just be for a bridge or it could be yeah you know then have that to be you, the doesn't have to be the end game strategy there because these no. things banking products will always be around so i'm always a fan of having the debt but not needing it rather than needing it not having it and then also on the insurance side you're also building your own banking system of of self-financing on the personal and or business side of things so that's great too all right yeah. and after a year um the is the the end game what is what is the for you to say this is a successful client after one year what do you want to set the expectation as for the client in this situation that they're just fully funded and the job's done or is it fully funded and a strategy to pay everything off within this period of time and understand their business credit profile and how to track it monitor it keep it safe keep it secured build it up like break that down for me what do you like to see so e e the the reason it's a year is because it takes about three to four months for business credit transactions to report to the agencies to the bureaus yeah. right and there's there's four quote unquote tiers or stages of building business credit it's just levels of access to different accounts 
So if you're trying to get access to certain accounts, but you don't have any prior business credit, you, you might strike out on that application because they look and see, well, you don't have any pre, pre, uh, pri, uh, previous business credit. So there's accounts that will give you approvals and access with no personal guarantee when you're just starting out. And that, those are considered tier one accounts. It takes about three to four months for those to report. Then once that reports, then it opens up the door for us to get access to some more accounts that are going to be typically more useful where we have like that net 30, 60, 90 day um, charge card cash spending type of a net 30 account versus accounts that are attached to like a particular retail store or product or service like NAT, right? Mm -hmm. um, so each tier is going to be about three or four months. And so ultimately that's why it takes 12 months. Now life happens. You know, I've had clients that, you know, after tier one or tier two, they get real busy. They lose focus, whatever. Right. They call me back eight months later, a year later, and they're like, hey, I never actually went all the way through. Can we pick up and continue? And the answer is yes, right? So my 12 months is not a hard stop if you haven't accomplished the objective. It's just a barrier I have to set if we already did accomplish, accomplish the objective and I feel like you know services have been rendered, right? Yeah. But if we need more time, we'll go as long as it takes to accomplish the objective. Yeah. The objective is to ultimately get uh, between 12 to 15 accounts reporting on Experian and on Dun & Bradstreet and about five to seven accounts on Equifax business okay. credit, right? That's the 12 month game plan, right? Now the building process is not any, I can't, I can't make a guarantee and I don't of any kind of funding. Building is instructions on building. So funding is separate. Because in the meantime, what you do is going to determine what you're going to qualify for, including how you manage your credit, your personal, the business, how, how's revenue, are you cash flowing? What, you know, what are your numbers? Right? And how quickly you move, you know, and with how quickly you yeah. action step that you're giving people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I can't control that. I'm a coach, right? Yeah. I, as a coach, I, I also coach soccer, right? And um, I, I tell my, my teammates, the kids, you know, you know, run a lap. And at the end of the lap, uh, lap the last 50, uh, 20 yards, you're going to sprint, right? Half of them stop running before the last 20 yards because they they give in. The other half jog that last 20. But then there's that small percentage that they put in that that extra effort and they sprint that 20. And mm -hmm. guess what? You see it in the game. You see the the one that does what they were coached and then puts that extra effort. The results show. But I can't I can't run the lap for you, right? Right. I can't right. do the push up for you, right? So you have to do it. Right. Um, some people ask about like a done for you program. Um, I'd really rather not even get into that. Yeah. But if, Tough. if it, if, yeah, if we were going to do something like that, then it would definitely be, you know, upwards in the, in the $10,000. But even then, like there's things that they have to do. Like it's your social security number, it's your driver's license, it's your addresses and everything. Yeah. You know, you got to, you have to set up addresses. You have to make sure things are filed properly. You got to create the accounts. We're talking, 15, 20 plus different types of accounts in this exactly. process. So you'd have to be willing to give me full power of attorney, access to all that stuff to manage your stuff. And yeah. that still doesn't guarantee you a loan because I do that all that great work, but then you crash your personal credit or you don't make the money you planned on making yeah. and your business is barely breaking even, right? Again, we have to show growth to get access to funding. It's not just good credit. It's a combination of personal credit, business credit, revenue, use of funds, industry, assets, cash on hand, all of that comes into play depending on the type of funding that we're going to be looking at. Yeah. So, so you know, my, my objective with any new client is to truly try to express these variables so that they understand I'm not some get rich quick, make, get access to funding quick, you know, let's just like, uh, I don't know, just pay me the money and let's, let's right. get a hundred thousand dollars. That's again, there's a place for that, but it's really a holistic organic approach. That's going to last for your business. As long as you continue to manage it and take care of it, you know, you're going to have access to it. And again, you never know when you're going to actually need it and then use it. You don't know when you're going to be that, when you're going to be in line for a contract and the company that you're working with is going to look at your business credit, right? Or yeah. you need to, you know, get more insurance or you need to, um, you know, finance, you know, computers or, 
whatever is going to come along the way, the, the key is to be, be to be prepared, be ready yeah. in advance. So when opportunity meets your preparation, you can strike and take advantage of the opportunity. Beautiful. Yeah, we definitely went in very, very deep in detail. And this is the type of content that is not the sexy content, but this is the reality. So for those of you that are watching, have watched this whole entire masterclass that we put together for you, the action steps from here is to go to Sebastian's YouTube channel, The Approved Guy, and I'll have it in the, in the comments and on the screen all throughout this video where you can start with his process initially, free consultation, get to know each other, interview goals, objective, objectives, intentions, right? And go through the process. We've laid out his pricing so you can plan for that in terms of what it'll cost you to work with Sebastian. And then even before that, we can do all this pregame work, all the free stuff. And understand the free stuff is not just free stuff. Like the free stuff that he's putting out is stuff you're going to have to do anyways. So you might as well try to do as many of the steps he is putting out there for us to do in advance. And that's going to make the consultation, the assessment, the evaluation, the funding solutions that much quicker, more efficient when you're actually in it, where you're like, okay, I invested the two grand, invested the 250, I'm paying for NAV, I'm paying for done, I'm paying for all these reporting and monitoring, I'm getting the different accounts, the LLC, the business phone number, the business email address, the business website. It's all these little knickknack fees that come with building business credit that a lot of these gurus totally leave out of the equation and leave you with figuring out your numbers along the way of acquiring six figures of debt. And no wonder why people, a lot of people that we don't hear about end up in a whole lot of debt. And those people we don't hear about are my clients. Uh, I have so many clients that went that route of borrow a bunch of credit card debt to do the bird method with real estate didn't work out now they hit me up now i'm helping them or it's they got a bunch of debt through credit cards through a, a guru and they were going to make an investment in crypto or they're going to use debt to invest in the market or the syndication didn't work out now they're my client so this is just letting you know in advance hey i got nothing wrong just, i really see nothing wrong with building business credit getting access to debt and leveraging debt when used properly. It's amazing. But being able to run the numbers, know your numbers, where you are right now, but then also run the numbers in terms of what you make and what we project will be our cost to acquire debt, our cost to service the debt, our cost to pay off the debt. There's a lot of cost in all that, right? <laughs> and let alone, let alone running a successful business, which is also hard in and of itself, right? So with that being said, we'll wrap up here. Thank you so much, Sebastian, for hanging out with us today and diving real deep. I look forward to doing this again with you. And check out his channel. Reach out. I'll have the links below. And we'll go from there. Have a wonderful day. God bless. And we'll be talking soon.